for coming to the Spine Conference. Today's discussion will be uh, low back pain with a normal x-ray. I mean, 85% of people get an episode of low back pain every year. I mean, does, does anybody here never had low back pain? Has everyone here had low back pain at some point? Yeah. Harvey, yeah, every, everybody has it. Yeah, so it's a really common, it's a common problem. And um, uh, the thing about low back pain is it's very disabling. Like when you have low back pain, you can't move. And you have no idea what's going on. Am I going to be like this for the rest of my life? Like, is it going to get better? What's going on? Why do I have such low back pain? Also, the the worst ones, you get these really, really big, strong men sometimes, and they're just angry that they're disabled. And they want to know why. And uh, it, it's, it's a common problem. Now, the issues with low back pain is the treatment. Sometimes in our society, we treat it too much. Sometimes we do the wrong treatment, and sometimes we treat too little. Like too much, when I say treat too much, for example, like a 21-year-old woman who comes to the ER, and the next day they do an A-lift, an anterior lumbar antibody fusion for a 21-year-old woman with 24 history of the back pain. I mean, I've seen that. And that's like way overboard. I mean, that, that woman would have gotten better. And then too little is you have like these poor elderly people who can't walk for years and years, and nobody will touch them. Uh, well, that's for spontaneous, but it, it, it's not done well. And sometimes it's the wrong treatment. Some people, time, people need no surgery. Sometimes they need medicine. Sometimes they need therapy. Sometimes it's the wrong thing. So this is a, a case of a 25-year-old man with low back pain. He lifted a dresser up, and then he can't move. He can't put his socks on. His wife has to put his socks on, and he has an annular tear. So what, what – um, Katie, you're seeing patients now, right? You're a mm -hmm. practitioner. What would you do? A 25-year-old man with low back pain, he can't move. His wife has to put his socks on. No sciatica. I'd send him on a steroid pack mm -hmm. to help with that acute relief. Well, I'm just curious. What do you give? A what? Med what do you kind of steroids? Med oh, medrol dose pack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, I mean, you can do a prednisone tape of medrol dose pack. It's just easier. Yeah. And then what? Anything else? Uh, once he finishes that steroid pack, I'd tell him to take um, over-the-counter ibuprofen as they did. Mm -hmm. To help uh, quiet some inflammation down. So that's it. Anything else? Um, I'd also refer him to uh, physical therapy mm -hmm. um, for additional relief of low back pain. And mm -hmm. if he hasn't had relief with physical therapy, I then would then consider an MRI. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if we were getting to this. We will, yeah, that's okay. fine. Yeah, so you do an MRI. So yeah, that would be my step. All right, what do you, Jen? Would you add anything, or do you do anything different? No, usually anti-inflammatories, PT, some gentle traction. If they have an obvious inversion table, like that mm -hmm. may help, but that's about it. Okay. So so the typical thing is um, I ask patients if it's on the belt line or the bra line, make sure it's thoracic, lumbar, cervical. Go ahead. Sometimes it's um, anti-spasmatic, Valium or muscle relaxer if they're really spasming. That's about it. Mm -hmm. I have people point with one finger in the... I always ask people what makes it worse, better, where it is exactly. You got to know how severe it is. You get it every day, all the time. If it's episodic, how long are the episodes, how many times a day? So, I mean, I, I think the, the, the lumbar spine was not created to be lordotic. The lumbar spine was created to be kyphotic. So you can see like a rat and all the other four-legged animals, they're, they're kyphotic in the lumbar spine. They're, they're curved down. And we're the only animals that walk – on uh, two legs so that we can use our hands. And because of that, the lumbar spine has become lordotic in human beings. And I think I think because of that, I don't know if this is true or not, but I think because of that, it's a very high probability that L4, 5, L5S1, which has all of our lordosis, deteriorates so quickly. It probably is not designed to be lordotic. Uh, and it's because we're the only uh, animals that are upright. So what do discs do? Discs uh, give us flexibility. You see this young gymnast, it's how flexible a lumbar spine. And a disc is basically two components, inner annulus, inner outside annulus fibrosis, which is thick and fibrous, and the inner nucleus pulposus, which is soft and water-filled. Some people say it's like a jelly donut. The inner part is, is more water, and the outer part is very thick. The outer part resists uh, uh, forces of, of tension. So here's uh, the anatomy of a cross-section. Oh, well, this is a 15-year-old, or a very young person, uh, who probably died in a car accident. And you can see the inner portion of the disc uh, is very uh, water, gelatinous. 
And as people get older, you lose the water content and uh, the disc starts to deteriorate. And this is, you insert dye into the nucleus pulposus in the middle part and the dye uh, goes outwards. And this patient has an annular tear. So the outer portion of the disc has torn, the thick part is torn and the dye is going in there. And that I think is the vast majority of disc pain. It's like these annular tears, but they're really, really, really painful. Now discs naturally deteriorate uh, as people get older. On the left is like a normal disc and it goes uh, in stages all the way down to where it's nearly bone on bone. And it's very common. The outer portion of the disc uh, is made up of uh, lamellar collagen. It's just collagen at 30 degrees to each other, and it gives it very tensile strength. So if you if you slice, this is the outer part of the annulus of the disc. If you slice it, look at it on that microscope. Can you see how the fibers are like 30 degrees to each other? I mean, it's quite incredible. And that gives it real a lot of strength. So the strength in the disc is tensile. So if you, if you twist, it gives the uh, disc a lot of strength. And uh, the people, fibers interlock? Well, yeah, so they're, they're at 30 degrees. Mm -hmm. So wherever you twist, right or left, it, it resists the tensile forces. So otherwise your disc will come apart when you like twist. Uh, and uh, so this, the outer part is really thick. And then the inner part is very soft and water filled. Um, so a lot of people describe it as like a herringbone pattern. Like this is a herring jack, herringbone jacket. And that's what a herringbone looks like. So you can see why it looks like that. It's a herringbone pattern. So this this is a, this is an interesting uh, article where they injected dye to see where the nerves are in a disc, and the out see how the outer part of the disc is really 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 innervated. So all the nerve fibers are in the annulus fibrosus, and I don't know why that is, but what it does cause is that when you have an annular tear, it's extremely painful, like super super painful and disabling. Um, there's one more thing I want to show you. This is Alf Mackamson's uh, article where he put a needle into discs and he had medical students go into different positions and he measured the pressure. And you can see the, the third one is a man standing and then the sixth one is a man sitting. So the pressure is higher when you sit and lower when you stand. So that's why if you have a bad disc, you feel better when you stand and you feel a lot worse when you sit. Uh, it's also a problem with, like, say, truck drivers or people who sit for a living and they have a bad disc. It's terrible because their disc is under a lot of pressure all the time. This is just – this is one more – this is a study by Bowden in 91 where he – Scott Bowden took 100 people who never had back pain in their lives if they did it was minimal. These are normal people who never had back pain and did MRIs. And he found almost everybody had problems. So the first – the first one's like 20 to 40, like a third of them had abnormalities. And then in like middle age, half of the people had abnormalities, either disc herniations, stenosis, bulging discs. And then after 60, almost everybody had abnormalities on the MRI. And these people had no pain. So the point is, uh, everyone's MRI, almost everyone's MRI gets abnormal as you get older. And it's probably part of the natural healing, uh, aging process. So just because you have a disc herniation or a bad disc or stenosis doesn't mean you need surgery. Uh, you have to correspond the symptoms to the MRI, I mean, as you guys know. So this is sort of like a normal MRI, a, a disc herniation, with decreased signal at L5-S1. And um, this is, what do you see, what are all the abnormalities you see on this gen? Because you're smart. What are all the, it's like almost all of them. Um, I'll describe this MRI. So, Sagittal MRI, T2 and T1. Um, there's multi level degenerative disc disease. There's Schmarl's nodes. Almost all of them, right? Almost, yeah, every almost all of them. There's yeah. sort of some Schmarl's nodes at 3, 4, uh, 2, 3. Um, in some of the images, you can tell there's a little bit of motive changes and marrow changes in the actual yeah. bones. 3, 4 is so. some motive changes, so decreased signal, mm -hmm. decreased disc height. Spondyl, he said L4 or 5. The whole spine is, um, is that normal? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, that's good. So risk factors for disc disease is very similar to the risk factors of heart disease. If you have a big gut, actually, a waist greater than 40 is an independent factor for uh, disc disease. High cholesterol diet, cigarette smoking, old age, uh, laborer, family history. So part of the non-operative uh, treatment for disc disease is core strengthening and you can see all the muscles uh, along the spine 
And there, there's different types of uh, exercises. Other options are acupuncture, chiropractic care, massage, um, cognitive behavioral training. Like sometimes if you send someone to a psychologist and they can deal with the pain, it's very, very helpful. Physical therapy, other it's things. Huh? Also, if they're depressed, their neck pain's never going to get better. Yeah. Because like the psychological component of their back pain. Absolutely. So uh, uh, depression, uh, I think. Um, manifests itself as. Well, it can. It can manifest as back pain, but also depression also can make the pain much worse. It kind of amplifies it. So it's like instead of like a two out of ten, it's ten out of ten. That's why that sure. saying is symbolic. I don't. Yeah, no, Cymbalta yeah, is Cymbalta is a good medicine for people who have both depression and pain. It's an excellent medicine. I, I use it all the time. You like Cymbalta? Yeah, it's a good drug. Um, other things are yoga, Tai Chi. Uh, I mean, my I basically tell, I don't know if I'm right in saying this, but I tell people the best things that you can do for yourself is to swim, lift weights, like light weights, like pull-ups, dips, planks, Stationary bicycle, walking, uh, squats, things like that to strengthen your core and maintain your uh, vitality. Did you, anybody add anything else to that? I just want to make sure you clarify with just like body weight squats. No like squatting with like yeah, yeah. more axial loading. Okay. Yeah, although my brother and I always get into a big argument how much weight is optimal. Like he, he, says, he thinks weights are fine, but I think like... He's not treating backs. <laughs> no, I think like 50 pounds is our... I mean, if you're a big guy, like I'm a big guy. 50 pounds for me. If you're smaller, maybe 10, mm -hmm. 20 pounds. Like, not a lot. Not right. like a football player squats. So, um, what's that? It's like CrossFit over 30. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the other, the other, the other uh, issue that's very important in back pain is fear avoidance behavior. So, people have pain, but the people who do the worst are the people who are afraid of pain. So it's called fear avoidance behavior. They're afraid that they're going to make things worse than what they are. They're afraid they're going to lose their job. They're afraid they're going to lose control. They won't be able to sleep. Uh, they feel isolated. They feel that it's never going to get better. They're going to uh, not be able to work. They're, once they get better, they think the pain is going to come back. Having fear is a big problem with back pain. So I think it's called fear avoidance behavior. So the patients who do the worst are the patients who have a very high fear avoidance behavior. The patients who do the best are the people who are not afraid of pain. So I think as part of a physician, it's very important to help them say, don't be afraid of it. Whatever it is, it's going to get better. And try to help reassure them so they don't get those behaviors. And another big thing is catastrophizing. So this is like, like when I get into the airplane, the first thing I think of is the airplane crashing and I get anxiety. You know, I'm catastrophizing. So a lot of people, when they have pain, they catastrophize. They think they're never going to be able to walk again. I mean, I had the discussion today with a woman. She was crying because she thought she was never going to walk. If it gets worse, she would never be able to walk. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's never going to happen. Right. Like, you can't think of the worst case scenario. And the people who think of the worst case scenario and catastrophize do the worst. Mm -hmm. So part of our job, I think, is to help them understand that they're going to get better and to reassure them. And I think, personally, I think a lot of what we do is breaking a pain cycle. So... A pain cycle is you have something painful and then you're stiff. You don't do anything. You stop exercising. You stop walking. You get even stiffer. Your muscles get weak. You don't do anything and it just gets worse and worse and worse. So I tell patients that what I'm doing is breaking a pain cycle. So this is anybody who's a baby, they know what a pain cycle is. It's like the baby will not stop crying. And it's like you're, you're up with the baby for five straight hours and you're about – you want to kill yourself. You don't know what to do. And the mother, and the mother, yeah, and the mother's going nuts. And then if you, if you give the mother thirty minute nap, she can deal with the baby again. So the point is, when you're in a cycle of pain, you go crazy. And if you can break a pain cycle, you can deal with it. Just like you can deal with a crying baby, if you take a thirty minute nap, you can deal with the crying baby again. But it, it, it's like it, it drives people crazy. So, like like you guys said. The way I break a pain cycle, I look at it as an inflamed disc. Like the definition of inflammation is pain, redness, swelling, uh, heat. And I do anti-inflammatories, either ibuprofen or meloxicam. I do muscle relaxers to break the pain cycle. You can use whatever you want. Lately, I've been giving people Valium. Uh, analgesics, uh, you can give painkillers, Tylenol, Tramadol. And then the other ones are like gabapentin and Cymbalta are helpful too. 
anybody want to add any more of the medicines? And, and how you do it, I don't know. It's like I kind of feel people out and see what they want. And uh, some people don't want anything. They want minimal. Some people want everything. People just want to know if they're okay. Huh? Some people just want to know they're okay. Yeah, like, yeah. Some people want to know, that. yeah, do I have, like, cancer? Do I have, like, a broken bone? Like that. So, yeah, you're, you're right. That's the next slide, reassurance. So, <laughs> yeah, no, it's perfect. It's perfect. So you reassure them that, yeah, it's like, you're okay. This is a normal problem. 50% of people your age have the same MRI. 85% of people go through the same thing once a year. So they, they feel better when you talk to them like that. So this is... So I'm just going to do a couple more cases. This is a 40. This is a different case now. 45 year old man with acute low back pain, just by picking up a pencil, and he has. What do you think of the MRIs here, Katie? What do you see? Uh, multi level degenerative disc disease, and he has right bottom three discs. L three, four, 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 five, L five is one. Yeah, four, five, yeah. Um, three, four, four, five, particularly at four, five, hence the arrow. Um, which is a common area. And the spinal canal. What do you think of the spinal canal? Uh, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty somatic. I'd have to look at the, um, yeah, it looks like actual cuts to see if he has, like, you know, it's three three too. but yeah. So this can, this can be low back pain too. So degenerative disease, degenerative disc disease plus stenosis, that Correct. can be low back pain. Correct. Yeah. So this is another case I want to talk about. This is a 35 year old woman with long history of low back pain. Uh, now she says her thigh is numb and she says her vagina is numb. And, um, what do you what do you see on the disc, Katie? Here at the L five S one. Five one is really tight. I mean, yeah. looking at that second to the left picture, I'm yeah. thinking I'm figuring that's five one. That's yeah. a five one disc. Yeah. Uh, there's I see like no light. I see no. Yeah. Like, so the disc takes out the one. whole spinal canal. Mm -hmm. And what's the what's the problem with vaginal numbness? I mean, we're concerned for cardiac. Yeah, cardiac syndrome. Saddle anesthesia. Yeah, saddle anesthesia. Yeah, saddle anesthesia. Yeah. Right. So cardioquina just means the horse tail. And if you open up the nerves, they look like a horse tail. And saddle anesthesia is if you paint, if you paint a saddle and you sit on it, and then you look where the pain is, that's where you get numb. And, uh, and so this woman just had vaginal numbness, but it's the start. And you want to stop it as fast as you can so that she doesn't totally lose it. And, so my question for you yeah. is, how did she tell you that she had vaginal numbness? Like, because I feel like she wouldn't just like You have to say ask. It. No. Like, right. Nobody wants to talk about their vagina or their penis or anus or scrotum. Never. Right. So you have to ask because it's embarrassing. Huh? Some of them really No, some do. Yeah, some people do. <laughs> no, some people do. Usually yeah, guys, you have to ask. usually same sex will tell you, but opposite sex, they're uncomfortable. So you have to ask. And But once you ask, they say it. They're like, yeah. It's like, I'm glad you asked me. It is numb. What's yeah. up? And uh, it's a serious problem, so you have to you have to ask. Um, so you can see here in the dermatome, S2, S3, S4, S5 is like the perineal area. And a good way to see if your bladder is working is a, a bladder scan. So if you're worried about cardiac syndrome, and they're in the hospital, you do you have them urinate, and then to get a post forward, post forward residual. If it's 200 cc's or, uh, or less, their bladder is probably normal. But if it's more, it means their bladder is not working. So any questions about cardioquinous syndrome? Or, and if cardioquinous syndrome is an emergency, you want to fix that. Otherwise, people can lose their bowel bladder control permanently or have uh, you know, anesthesia, a numb like private area, which is terrible because when they have sex, they can't feel it. So it's a disaster for them personally. So any questions about cardioquinous syndrome? Or, I know I'm going fast, but huh? Good. Okay. So the other thing is, um, as a practitioner, what other things cause back pain? A lot of things that are not the spine can cause back pain. Like, for example, this is a 65-year-old uh, uh, man uh, that I saw once, and he had low back pain, and his MRI was kind of normal. And it was terrible. He said he couldn't eat anything. He, was, he said he was miserable. And he, this guy had pancreatitis. And, and the reason... I, yeah, and the reason why I figured it out is like things just didn't add up. His MRI was not it was not that bad. He wasn't getting better. It's like it's weird. So these people with pancreatitis, it's a very serious diagnosis. They have they have uh, they have back pain, but they also have yeah abdominal pain. Yeah. Yes, they have abdominal pain, usually tenderness, sometimes nausea, vomiting, uh, and. To make the diagnosis, they have to have abdominal pain. You can get a blood test, serum amylase, a lipase. 
where you get a CAT scan or X-ray. And pancreatitis is it can be a, a very serious disease. I mean, people die from pancreatitis sometimes. Um, I remember I remember when I was a uh, when I was in my first year of practice, there was a at GW there was a um, the pew rep who was a lacrosse player, and uh, he stood me up for a lunch date. I was like, what a jerk, you know, like, he could at least call me. So two weeks later, one of my friends calls, did you hear about, you know, the guy? And I was like, no, the jerk didn't come to lunch. He's like, he's, in, he's a pancreatitis, he's in the ICU. I was like, what? He was like, he was like 35. He, he died from that. The guy was 35 years old, he died. And it was just from gallstones. So it can be, it can be a really dangerous disease, pancreatitis. Um, he was like a friend of a friend, too. Anyway. Uh, urinary tract infections can um, uh, give you back pain. What other, Jen, what? what? Kidney stones. Kidney stones, yeah. You just said kidney, kidney stones are here. Can get, and usually they're spastic. Um, uh, gallbladder cholecystitis can uh, give you back pain. What, what's, the, what's the best test for cholecystitis in uh, our oh, people? Either ultrasound or just push on the right upper quadrant and have to take oh, a deep yeah. breath. Mm -hmm. uh, inspiratory arrest. Like anything sort of acute abdomen is not your back. Yeah, yeah, acute abdomen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. IBD, all those, yeah. yeah uh, aortic aneurysm is possible. Peptic ulcer disease, like Jen said, kidney stones. Another thing is right lower quadrant is diverticulitis. So, um, uh, in a young woman, like pelvic inflammatory disease can can also give low back pain. But what do you think? What's what's this X-ray? What's uh, Say this person has back pain. What, what is different from this X-ray, Katie, than everybody else? What is this? It's kind of well. Crazy. I mean, I know what the initials. What is it? Ankylosing Just say it. Yeah. So ankylosing spondylitis. So the whole spine is fused. Right. Now, the hips. Yeah, the hips. The hips <laughs> yeah, are fused too. I don't see <laughs> it's an incredible disease. So the important thing about ankylosing spondylitis is that this X-ray takes about 20 years to happen. So this X-ray. You don't look like this right away. Mm -hmm. You have ankle spondylitis. It takes a long time. So, and this this is usually like when they're fifty or sixty, but this is what they look like when they're like a young man. Or sometimes, hold on. Uh, sometimes, yeah, young guys they show up and they have back pain. The MRI is normal, and they have frequently have ankylosing spondylitis. Yes, we have morning stiffness. You get HLA B twenty seven. So their X ray doesn't look abnormal initially, and these poor guys are suffering usually, but some women too. Uh, and that's another cause of low back pain, not surgical. It's like, you know, medical treatment. Ankylosing spondylitis, their bone skin can line up, and the MRI, the sacred iliac joint can line up. Uh, another thing to give you low back pain is uh, Lyme disease. Have you seen Lyme disease, low back pain? That was horrible, but I can't explain the back pain. Yeah. I don't really see <laughs> joint pain. But, yeah, we do a really good rheumatology workup. Yeah, if something doesn't add up, I usually order a Lyme mm -hmm. starter. And I, the only reason I think about Lyme disease with back pain is my son was on a soccer team. He was 12. And one of the kids on the team had low back pain. Nobody could figure it out. And he finally realized he had Lyme disease. It was like bizarre. I feel like Lyme geographically in Baltimore is pretty high. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, not as much as it used to be because people kind of people kind of like know to check for it. Another, another thing that causes low back pain is uh, hyperparathyroidism. So if you have an adenoma and hyperparathyroid, you get sacroiliitis, uh, and the uh, and the sacroiliac joint can get really inflamed. And that can give you low back pain. That's kind of rare. So psychosocial issues can give you low back pain, like uh, fear, anxiety, financial problems, anger, depression. Depression can be a cause of low back pain, like Jen said. So. There, there are times, though, when people have low back pain, you have to have a high index of suspicions, like something really bad's going on. If they have a history of cancer in their lifetime, if they're osteoporotic, they're on steroids, they're immunosuppressed, say, rheumatoid. If they have ankylosing spondylitis, because it could be a fracture. Uh, if they've lost weight, uh, if they're IV drug abuser, or if they have a history of urosepsis. Mm -hmm. So this, Jen, this is a 66-year-old woman with low back pain, and she's admitted to the hospital for urosepsis. And she got an X-ray and a CT which are here, which show no stenosis, and she refuses to go in the MRI scanner. Of course. So what, what would you do at that point? The patient goes, I'm not going to scan, I'm claustrophobic. This is a real case. Mm. Any, I mean, any you ideas? definitely want to do a CT Milo if she is urosepsis because right. you can get her meningitis. Right. Um, I mean, she has sort of a vacuum cleft 
and I also have this one, so questionable discitis, sure. but maybe just. That's a trick. That's a trick question. So I said you're going in the scanner. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. So I just <laughs> we're, took, gonna, we're gonna, yeah. I made her go. I made her go. Her yeah, I made her go. I mean, you're. I said if you don't do this, you're gonna die. And uh, she I'm went. Probably gonna die. Yeah. And uh, she did have an abscess. You can see like the pus. Yeah. In the spinal canal. And it's not a good MRI because she's moving, but there's mm -hmm. there's pus. And then I did a, a two level decompression for an epidural abscess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a drawing. Yeah. I know. I love that. Yeah, I do that. I do that for my cases. Mm -hmm. So here's another guy, 65 year old, 65 year old man, um, Katie, with low back pain, and the X-ray looks kind of normal. He's had two cataplexes. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the MRI? Uh, I mean, he has degenerative discs throughout, not as hydrated. Uh, what about the uh, bottom square, vertebrae body five, L five? Oh, he kind of has. I don't know if like a compression fracture, but it's not. He's, he's lost vertebral height in L five. How about the color of L five compared to the other? It, well, it light, it lights up. It lights like up, yeah. Not like the vertebral body. Yeah, so he has a fracture. Even though the X-ray is normal, he's got like a minimal fracture. Okay. Yeah, it looks normal. So I did a kyphoplasty, then he came back. The next one hurt. I did a second kyphoplasty. He finally got better. Uh, the other thing is we, huh? You should, yeah. This is, a man, this is unusual because it's a man. Yeah, the other thing is your spidey sense. Like, it, you, if your spidey sense is firing, you're usually right. Something's not right. And the spidey sense is intuition. And uh, red flags are pain at night. People say it feels better when I walk around or when I'm active, if they have a deficit or if you're suspicious of cancer. So here, other things that low back pain normal x-ray is a metastatic tumor, like diffuse metastatic tumor, before it fractures, that can be a pain. Mm -hmm. And even epidural tumor can give you back pain too. So, so yeah, it happens. So um, so that's, that's it. So any questions about low back pain, normal x-ray? Anybody, Jen? Harvey? Okay. That's it. All right, thanks, guys. Thank That's you. it for the discussion. Hold on, let me turn it off. Thanks for listening to me. <laughs>